what we try to do at Thurston with our Blue Jet product is it's it's all about making farmers more efficient in their operation. So we've uh, we've taken our commercial class fertilizer applicator equipment, as well as our conservation tillage equipment, and really built a platform that is uh, less maintenance, higher acres per hour, and uh, and more efficient for a farmer who has a strip till operation. For example, we don't have a lot of daily grease cirques on our rows. We have about one grease cirque that we want to see grease daily on the rows. Everything else can be adjusted with a three-quarter inch wrench and is very durable and, and lasts for acres and acres through the field. We've always been focused on uh, efficiency for the operator and efficiency uh, gains for our customer. And it was really interesting uh, one day when I was sifting through some old notes of my father's uh, back from, I believe these were dated uh, early to mid 80s. Uh, here, was a, uh, here were notes on an application process that would put down fertilizer in the row, build a little berm, fumigate at the same time, and plant at the same time. So when we look at what we uh, consider the definition of strip till today, it was pretty interesting that, uh, that our roots in strip till go back at least that far in terms of the thought process. And actually we built a machine back then uh, that did exactly that. So it's kind of neat to see uh, the thought process clear back in the early to mid 80s to what has developed into uh, strip till today. In 1971, my grandfather founded a company in Thurston, Nebraska called Thurston Manufacturing Company. The first uh, items that we uh, worked on in that manufacturing plant included a lot of modifications to equipment that was already manufactured, but he had a better idea as, as to how to make them function on his farm. So that's really where, uh, like a lot of companies out there, that's really where we got our start. Um, the first product that was actually named Blue Jet uh, was actually a quick coupling and hydrous ammonia hitch. Uh, and uh, at the time, uh, when they were trying to figure out what they were going to name this quick coupling and hydrous ammonia hitch, um, they, uh, they went through a bunch of ideas, of course, and uh, they wanted something that would uh, mean sleek and fast uh, and quick. And uh, at the time, uh, Jet was, uh, was pretty fast, and uh, the colors of the high school were blue. And so they put uh, blue and Jet together, and uh, that's where we get our name, Blue Jet, is, uh, is uh, from, that, uh, from that first product and from the, from the tradition that we have in town there of the high school. We feel that the education of the grower and supporting those events that, that help to educate growers uh, helps everybody in the long run, including ourselves. So, you know, we try to build equipment uh, that is is based around uh, operator efficiency and good stewardship of the land, and uh, and uh, uh, lowering cost of inputs per acre for the operator, and and supporting these educational classes uh, for for farmers uh, really rings true to. The promotion of the ideals that we try to build equipment around and uh, when when you think about it that way uh, it's it's really uh, easy for us to promote education for farmers because uh, it, it lends itself right into uh, what we try to do in our philosophy at Blue Jet which is you know good stewardship of the land and uh, and uh, being as efficient as you can with your inputs uh, leads to uh, leads to good uh, leads to leads to best management practices in agriculture strip till interest uh, really uh, really took a turn uh, a turn down when we had seven dollar corn for example we had a lot of farmers uh, who were out there who were just trying to grow as many bushels as possible because uh, because we, because we had such price such high prices and then it was then it was well just uh, you know let's disc this residue under so we can plant the next corn crop right on top of it and we weren't really focused on efficiency and we weren't really focused on 
uh, on uh, decent management practices at that time. We were focused on let's make this money while this corn while this corn is up uh, and uh, and the price is good. Now that we're looking at uh, now that we're looking at lower corn prices, we've got a lot of a lot more guys trying to focus on efficiency. Whether it's fuel efficiency through the field by reducing the number of passes through a strip till operation, or it's uh, fertilizer efficiency uh, by putting the fertilizer in the ground right where the roots are going to or are going to find it. Um, we see growers coming back to the idea that strip till really is going to be a part of this and uh, a lot of no-tillers are already practicing strip till in some part of their operation for example and we see more and more people that uh, that are starting to go towards either strip till or no-till as a way to not only conserve fuel but because it's uh, it's it's good stewardship and good land management practice. Um, in addition to that, uh, we do have some things hanging in the balance out there in terms of government regulations and, and uh, be it a watershed or EPA that, uh, that could really change the game for some of the ways that people apply fertilizer or some of the ways that they're allowed to till. Um, an example would be the three counties uh, just right around here in central Iowa uh, that are being sued by the city of Des Moines over nitrates in the water right now. Um, if, if we don't start to self-regulate our management practices with some uh, fertilizer injection and, uh, and strip till type banding, it's uh, we're going to see we're going to see things come through the legislative and, and uh, legal processes that uh, that we're not going to like. So, as a whole, I think we're going to see a lot uh, a lot more strip till being practiced, uh, particularly in the next three, five, and ten years, just due to uh, just due to the regulative and environmental aspects that we're talking about. Outside of North America, there are pockets that are very, very interested in strip till, particularly the concept and how it can make uh, their operation more efficient and more productive. Uh, a great example is uh, the country of South Africa, for, for just just as one example. Um, we see uh, we see growers there very interested in strip till. The climate is a lot like we would find in uh, central Nebraska, or a lot a lot of part of South Africa is in central Nebraska. And uh, uh, we've we've already proven that strip till works very very well in that condition there. Um, you know, uh, other parts of the world that are looking at it, uh, particularly our Western Europe. Uh, they are looking at uh, strip till in Western Europe, particularly from an environmental and a and a conservation standpoint, uh, where they have some government regulations that are coming into place that uh, that may affect the way that they place fertilizer into the ground instead of spreading it on top, as well as reducing passes in the field compared to the old plow method. So, uh, some exciting things going on in the world as well in terms of. Uh, in terms of what we see in strip till.